hormone therapy, that wonderful thing that can help feminize or masculinize our bodies depending on our identities and our gender transition needs. It can take two to three years typically for most of the changes to fully occur, but do you need to be on hormone therapy for the rest of your life? So you probably hate this answer, but it depends. Maybe yes, maybe no. Well, thanks Chloe, this was certainly helpful and informative. Before you run away, we need to ask, what does it depend on? First and foremost, let's ask ourselves a few questions. Why am I taking hormone therapy? What are my goals? What is the purpose? How pronounced do I want those changes to be? Do I want the changes to be permanent? And just based on who I am, are there any potential health complications that could occur with being on hormone therapy for a long period of time? These are just a handful of questions that can kind of help us suss out if this is something I need to be on for a short period of time or my entire life or somewhere in between. For me, I started hormone therapy because I needed to transition genders to live my life as a woman. I wanted the changes to be permanent. I wanted the changes to be pronounced because I had no desire to live as a man or any desire to have any masculine traits or anything like that or reduce whatever masculine traits I have as much as possible. And for those of you that are transitioning from one binary gender to another, like trans men and trans women, you'll likely align with me on this. I have to put a disclaimer here though, because what I am sharing is based off of my own experiences of hormone therapy, which is based on feminizing or estrogen-based hormone therapy. And although many of the changes are permanent, or at least semi-permanent after being on a standard dose of hormone therapy for about two to three years, there is the possibility of a partial reversal of some changes if you go off for a lengthy period of time and if you haven't been on it for that long of a time either. For say a trans woman who has not had any form of bottom surgery, so like an orchiectomy or a vaginoplasty, testosterone will gradually return if estrogen and testosterone blockers are stopped for a period of time. But an important piece to consider here is that have you had bottom surgery? As someone who has had a vaginoplasty, my body now produces very little endogenous or naturally occurring testosterone because the male gonads have been removed. And because my body is not really producing a whole lot of endogenous testosterone, it would not be ideal for me to stop my estrogen-based hormone therapy because I could get to a point where my, both my estrogen and testosterone are really low and then I don't really have a good level of any of those hormones and uh, that can be unhealthy. This can affect bone density, it can affect brain function, among many other things. And I would like to avoid that as much as possible. So at this point in time, I will probably need to stay in hormone therapy for the foreseeable future more likely for the rest of my life. Furthermore, the current World Professional Association of Transgender Health, also known as WPATH, their standards of care, which most gender-affirming providers follow, recommend lifelong hormone therapy in most cases, unless there's any sort of, you know, comorbid health conditions that would make hormone therapy unsafe for the long term. And side note, I know WPATH standards of care are far from perfect. They have their issues kind of outdated at this point, but that is an issue for another video. Just know that it's probably the best we have in terms of guidelines at this point, but no, it is far from a perfect system. But I do know they are working on a standards of care version eight, and they're actually having, I think at least a few trans people involved this time in making it. So hopefully it'll continue to get better. But anyways, I digress. Typically the most adverse side effects that could occur with hormone therapy, um, are high risk of blood clotting and reduced bone density for trans women or any individuals who are on estrogen-based therapy. Um, it could be non-binary individuals who are desi desiring feminizing changes but don't identify as trans women. And there's also, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, polycythemia for trans men and individuals on testosterone therapy, which I believe is a condition where the blood can thicken and cause its own problems. And this is based on existing research, what we currently have, and for the most part, a lot of the very long-term effects of hormone therapy are still understudied. But providers generally recognize that the benefits, like the mental and physical health benefits of being on hormone therapy for trans and non-binary people, far outweigh the risks in the vast majority of cases. 
keep all of this in mind if you're planning on having something like bottom surgery, like a vaginoplasty, a orchiectomy, a hysterectomy, because your body's ability to produce endogenous testosterone or endogenous estrogen will likely be greatly reduced, and it will be greatly reduced following those sorts of surgeries. And that hugely factors into how long you will need to stay on hormone therapy. And again, you do not have to get any sort of bottom surgery, any sort of gender confirmation surgery to be valid as a trans or non-binary person. Just want to throw that in. But going back to some of those other questions I asked at the beginning, what if you only want like partial or subtle physical changes to be induced by hormone therapy? Although there are generally recommended doses, dose ranges for estrogen and testosterone therapy for gender transition, these recommendations are generally based on full permanent medical transition that is typically pursued by trans men and trans women and some non-binary people. But maybe you, again, only want to slightly masculinize or feminize your body because that is more aligned with your transition goals. So this could be a case where you might take hormone therapy for a shorter period of time in order to create those changes that achieve maybe a more quote-unquote androgynous look, or it's just you're getting some of those changes, some of those partial changes, I mean, unfortunately, we can't control exactly what the hormones will change for us. So, you know, how partial some changes will be is kind of dependent on the person and how we react to hormone therapy. But thus, you know, using a shorter dose for a, sh a smaller dose for a shorter period of time, more drastic changes are less likely. But I'm not a medical doctor, so be sure to discuss all of this with your doctor, with your endocrinologist, primary care specialist, or whoever is prescribing your hormone therapy, providing that you hopefully have access to an understanding, inclusive, and supporting supportive doctor and gender care team who can help you explore your unique needs for your medical transition. And I emphasize that point here because nothing that I say here is meant to be any sort of medical device, just a more broad discussion on hormone therapy based on the research literature and my own experiences. So I'm going to keep this one short, but in closing, again, it depends. You will likely need lifelong hormone therapy if you have any sort of bottom surgery that removes the gonads because exogenous hormone production will be permanently changed following that. But if you don't pursue bottom surgery or only looking for partial changes, you may not need to be on hormone therapy for the rest of your life if you do not desire to do so. But again, make sure you talk to your doctor to kind of get the hormone therapy regimen that best matches your needs, but also is most appropriate for your health and any maybe comorbid health conditions that you have to consider. I'll turn it over to you now so that I can take a breath. So what are your reactions to what I've shared here today? If you might need to be on hormone therapy for the rest of your life, how do you feel about that? Are you like, oh no, that's terrible, or are you like, mm, whatever, I don't care? Was anything surprising or new to you in this video? And if you're someone who is pursuing a partial medical transition, so to speak, through hormone therapy, share what that has been like for you if you feel comfortable doing so. Because that is definitely an area that is not as well understood, you know, in popular literature and in research literature and by providers and by the community at large as well. Let me know all of this and so much more down in the comments below. And as always, Tipsy and I love you all and hope you're staying safe and sound. If you have not done so already, please be sure to give this a huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I love you all. Bye for now.